Fellas, nobody loves rolling around on the floor in VR while holding back vomit more than me. But I'll be honest, most current VR headsets, well, the experience is so bad, you might as well pay someone to beat your ass in an alley. But this year, that might actually change due to some huge advancements in VR hardware, finally allowing great clarity, motion, and weight on a much smaller form factor, which is why this year during CES, I visited Pimax's booth to try out the brand new Dream Air, a headset that at least on paper is exactly what I've been looking for. Now, real quick, this video and my CES 2026 coverage is sponsored by Pimax, which really helps with travel, but all my thoughts and opinions are my own. So with that out of the way, why are the Pimax Dream Air and Dream Air SE such big deals in 2026, or at least hopefully will be in my opinion? And let's start off with the big brother, the Dream Air. Now, this one's gonna be the most expensive and most featured one out there when it comes to, you know, the highest resolution, the best clarity you can possibly get, etc. And this thing, well, it's going to come equipped with Sony micro OLED panels, allowing for basically infinite contrast. And in my opinion, this is the best move they've ever made. Now, listen, sure, are there some reasons to go with LCD? Yeah, but I I'm going to be honest, LCD has a ton of problems, and I'm so glad that they're finally ditching it for micro OLED. It's just going to be a much better experience. In fact, I'll talk talk about my experience in just a bit, because yes, it was actually really good. Now, the resolution of these micro OLEDs is 3840 by 3552 per eye. Now, that is an insanely high resolution, and it's going to be to a point where, you know, if you've tried out VR before and you saw the screen door effect, that, I can tell you, is gone. And not only is the screen door effect gone, but you're going to notice that the actual clarity on things is so high that you can finally make out text, even at a fair distance. Now, is it perfect? No, but it's pretty dangerous good and it does come with a refresh rate of 90 hertz which is acceptable listen pretty much 90 hertz is considered good for vr i like 120 hertz or higher but yes 90 hertz will still feel good and yeah maybe a next generation model can push it even higher but yeah this will do now the lenses they're using are pancake lenses and these are supposed to lead to quite possibly some of the highest sweet spot on a display that you may have ever seen in vr if you've had a chance to try out vr because let's be honest this is a niche category, but I'm hoping it becomes more mainstream with headsets like this because with these great OLED panels and then pancake lenses allowing for a really wide uh, field of view that's undistorted or messed up, it's going to actually start to look good, and I can tell you it does. Now, this will also come with currently a horizontal field of view of around 110. I believe we're looking at maybe 90 to at most 100 degrees vertical, which is pretty solid, although that's going to be a fairly average field of view for VR. Now, I'm hoping they do end up pushing it just a little bit higher because from what I understand, they are capable of maybe pushing towards 115, and that certainly would help with you know, getting rid of the toilet paper roll effect on your eyes. Although I will mention the binocular overlap of these things is insanely good as well. I noticed that this is quite possibly some of the best binocular overlap I've seen. Certainly, in my opinion, the best I've ever seen out of Pimax. And if you don't know what that means effectively the right and the left eye overlap in the center to a point where it kind of looks like one continuous piece of vision rather than looking through binoculars which is great for immersion now there will be two different versions a lighthouse version for base station outside in tracking which will be far more accurate but it is going to come at a cost because you have to buy the base stations and compatible controllers however you know listen they're going to have a version that will technically cost less because it'll have inside out tracking and maybe they'll get it right. Sure, maybe pigs will fly. But listen, unfortunately, I've had a bad experience with Pimax when it comes to inside out tracking. And it's not just them. A lot of companies have tried their inside out tracking and had a lot of problems with it. A jittery tracking, just not feeling quite right or so, just something always being wrong with it. So I really would recommend trying out the Lighthouse version if you're interested. By the way, when these go on sale, I'll have them as affiliate links in the description below. But I'm going to be getting the lighthouse version, hopefully sent to me by them fairly soon. Now, this will also have eye tracking with dynamic foveated rendering, which does mean that, you know, wherever you're looking, that direct spot you're looking will be rendered at the highest resolution and around your eyes. I know this sounds scary, but yes, around your eyes, it'll be a lower resolution, but I promise you, you're unlikely to notice it unless you do a very, I guess, aggressive type of profile. So as long as you keep it so that it's not super aggressive, which you should at least, have, I believe, have access to on 
their tool, it should work pretty well, give you extra performance and not be visually noticeable because you're not gonna be looking at those lower res areas. It's just gonna be peripheral view. Now it does also apparently have hand tracking. It's gonna have integrated spatial audio, which I actually thought was all right when I tried it out. It's gonna have a dual fan for cooling. I didn't hear it though. That being said, I was in a somewhat loud environment and this is gonna be a display port type of headset. So you're it's not gonna be wireless. No, you can't roll all over the place without hitting the wire. That might be annoying, but this will lead to, at least in theory, the lowest latency as well as highest quality quality image you can possibly get. And to be honest with you guys, part of me is a little sussy mogus out uh, by, um, you know, sending really, really high bandwidth stuff directly to my forehead. It's probably fine. I'm probably just paranoid, but you know, part of me does like sticking to a cable because that's tried and true. I digress though. This thing, here's where it gets really interesting. 170 grams of weight allegedly on the headset itself. And I can tell you when I tried it on, it is incredibly light and this is really, really important for VR. This is going to lead to a really good experience, especially if you're having a lot of motion and they actually thought about the weight distribution, the cable, the display port cable that goes into the headset splits into the left and right side. So it distributes the weight equally. That's really important for, you know, if you're going to do a cable experience. Now the brightness of these panels will likely be about hundred to 150 nits and the price here's where it gets an ouch. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right up front, right here, this will be expensive. However, the Dream Air SE with a lower resolution will be far, far more affordable. So prepare yourself, prepare your anus, $1,899. And that is not including the base stations you're going to need for the Lighthouse version. So yeah, that's an ouch. It's probably going to cost in excess of like $2,300, $2,400, maybe even more depending on, you know, base station availability to get this whole thing up and going. So this is truly an enthusiast option. And we'll get to the far more affordable option in just a second with the Dream Air SE. But I do want to round out my impressions with this thing. By the way, availability potentially to begin in February 2026. So coming up soon, I think it'll get pushed back a little bit because they are making some adjustments and improvements. But here's my thoughts on this thing. I will tell you, this is the best visual experience I've ever had with a VR headset by a lot. It, it was incredibly clear. Every little dial on the car that I was driving was, it was just super easy to read it looked great. There wasn't massive latency or weird problems with the headset itself. Now, to be fair, I haven't tried out the tracking with controllers yet, so we'll see how that is. But everything I saw so far was just super smooth, super seamless, extremely clear. There wasn't any weirdness with the lenses. I wasn't having any major reflections or problems within the lenses. It just was basically a flawless experience, super lightweight and really comfortable as well. My only gripe with it right now, and they had a lot of people complaining about about this is that the cushion that goes over your eyes, I felt like it was kind of weird because it didn't go on the sides of my face as much as I was hoping it would. And it also didn't allow me to get as close to the panels as I was hoping. So it kind of narrowed the field of view. But other than that, it was really solid. I'm just hoping they can pull through with the tracking. Hopefully the lighthouse tracking is as good as it was in the crystal light or maybe even better. If that's the case, I think this is gonna be an absolute banger. And I'll be honest, yes, probably worth the eight $1,899. But wait for my review. I will be reviewing it because there's a lot of things that go into VR. It could, you know, if the software is not right, it could end up being an absolute nightmare. So please wait before pre-ordering. Uh, but so far, yeah, this is the best VR headset I've ever tried. Now, I did not try the Dream Air SE personally as I was really in a crunch for time. However, I did hear that there was some, you know, some issues with the lenses. I believe some people were saying that they were getting maybe, you know, more reflection within the lenses and they didn't necessarily love it as much as the other one. Now, this one is a 2560 by 2560 per eye for the Dream Air SE. Keep in mind, it's gonna be far more affordable. We'll get to that in just a second. But yeah, you're talking, you know, a far lower resolution. Now, is that a low resolution? I would say no, 2560 by 2560 per eye. I've used that in many headsets. Looks very good still. So don't be fooled into thinking you absolutely need 4K per eye. Is it awesome? Yes, it is. It's more clear. It's definitely better, but 2560 by 2560 Pry is still very good. Still 90 Hertz micro OLED, and you are still gonna be getting, you know, similar field of view, potentially five degrees less. Pretty much everything else should be the same as the other headset, except for apparently it's gonna be around 140 grams, so even lighter. And here's where you might be interested. The price is gonna be $899 for the Lighthouse version. Now the Slam version, which is inside out tracking plus controllers, 
$1,200, but let's just ignore that because I'm gonna assume that it's still gonna have bad tracking. I'm sorry, Pimax, but your tracking has been very bad. I, there's no way I'm recommending that until I try it out myself and can confirm that it's fixed. So for now, Lighthouse version, 900 bucks. You buy the, con other, you know, if you have to buy other controllers plus space stations, you yes are gonna be, if, unless you have them already, you're probably talking in excess of $1,000. But that being said, I think this could be, as long as they fix the issues with the, you know, lenses that people are complaining about, this might just be the best headset you can buy outright because the Crystal Light, which, you know, to be honest with you, after you use Lighthouse tracking was a far more affordable version of their other products. Well, that thing to this day is my favorite headset. Not because it's perfect. It's heavy. It's bulky. It's ridiculous. You basically have to use outside in tracking with base stations or it's not a great experience. Despite all that, it was a dang good experience in terms of both clarity as well as tracking consistency. And that's not something I can say for every headset. So if they can do the same with this, but bring the weight and size way down and get your micro OLED, yes, it'll be a bit more expensive than that, but man, is this gonna be a good headset. So this one is likely not gonna be available until another month or two after the Dream Air. So the Dream Air SE probably talk in February, March at best, probably even later than that before you can actually get your hands on it. But I think it's gonna be pretty dang good. Now they did have one other product and that's the Pimax Crystal Super, which is basically the Dream Air, except for just enormous, uh, cause now they have micro OLEDs as an option in that as well. Well, that thing, they were showing off Lighthouse Tracking. So the Lighthouse Tracking should be coming for that if you you already own it, definitely, definitely, please, for the love of God, pick up the Lighthouse tracking faceplate. It will absolutely make this headset way, way better. But I'm gonna be honest with you, even though, I, you know, I believe it's gonna have slightly larger field of view, this, you know, there's no real reason for it to have any difference between this and the tiny version. So the tiny Dream Air version is just gonna be way lighter. And if you have the choice between the Pimax Crystal Super and the Dream Air, definitely, definitely, if the Dream Air ends up getting all the love that it needs, I would definitely myself go for the Dream Air over the Crystal Super at this point in time. If you already own the Crystal Super, pick up the Lighthouse Tracking. I did not get a chance to try it there because the the wireless interference was so insane that every other VR headset I tried had terrible tracking. So I just said, screw it. I'm gonna wait till I get my hands on it. I will have my hands on it very soon. So keep an eye out for that. But yeah, it, you know, to be honest with you, I think Pimax is going in the right direction. Smaller, lighter, lighthouse tracking, everything that everyone's been asking for, you know, micro OLED, it sounds like they are delivering. So I'm really excited to take a look at these. I'm definitely gonna have some reviews on them. If you're interested, make sure you get subscribed. I mostly review monitors and some TVs, uh, but yes, I do VR as well. And hopefully that actually will be picking up even more in 2026 as we finally have a ton of good super light headsets coming this year. And yeah, I think they're gonna be really awesome.